This is another cooking favorite that perhaps we don't all have choices for a recipe. Uh, maybe one for the family and it's been passed down through the, the ages and the years and it involves lamb. And uh, we thought it'd be kind of fun to have a little road trip involved with, uh, I will say, two icons of the Northwest. Right, Carol? Right. You know, it wouldn't be a cooking show on KCTS without George Ray. And George went down the street, got to hang out with Tom Douglas at the Palace Kitchen, and they made some Greek lamb. Let's go have a look. We're at the Palace Kitchen at Fifth and Lenora in downtown Seattle with Tom Douglas. And Tom, you just, uh, I was going to say destroyed a leg of lamb, but <laughs> what you did was you took out all the bones and now we've got some really wonderful meat to cook here. Uh, we really do. Nice to see you out of the studio and back in the kitchen. Yeah, it is. Thrilled to have you here. You know, usually you're over there at the studio all prim and proper. Now you're in the bowels of the kitchen. You're back where the cooks hang out. I love to cook. This is a good spot to be. To we've got a live fire, so we have to have our hood on. It makes it sound like some Boeing factory in here. It does but, indeed. But uh, so this is the same kind of fire. You know, this is an applewood fire, the same kind I make on my Weber grill at home. So you could do this This. How, that I'm how important is that, that the, the wood? How important is the wood? The yeah. caveman cooked with it. This is this is the real deal. This is the way we were taught how to cook by the land. <laughs> so what we're going to do is I've got this American lamb here. It's a pretty good size. Uh, it this is. is about a 12-pound bone-in lamb roast. When I took the bones out, we probably took it down to nine pounds. This should feed about 10 people just perfectly. Yep. Okay. So uh, we're going to uh, I bones it out. You can see. Uh, one of the nice things about serving a butterfly lamb, like this is called a butterfly leg, right. is that all the different parts cook in a different time frame. So that uh, if somebody likes it well, they'll get this chunk. If somebody likes it medium rare, they'll get this chunk, and rare will be the big muscle. Wow. All right? The other thing you can do, and what you find in your local groceries, mostly with legs of lamb, is it's all wrapped up in a net. Yeah. Right? So I like that fine. One of the, the problems with the net is that when you season it from the outside and then you roast it in the net, when you cut the net off, boom, it pops off all your seasoning. So oh, I kind of I yeah, I don't of love that. that. I didn't the other thing that. you do is if you take the net off, is you can season the inside and then close it up and just use some butcher twine and re-tie it. Right. Now you've got an inside and outside seasoned yeah. roast. Okay? So you want to beautiful, leave a beautiful looking roast. Yeah, you want to leave a little bit of the fat on. You want to feel, put your hand right there. Yeah. You feel that's kind of hard, right? Yeah, yeah. And feel right here. Yeah, almost See? nothing. Yeah, almost nothing. So this fat is fine. This might be a little thick. Maybe we want to take out some of this fat here. Okay. Because on a barbecue, the more fat you have on it, the more it's going to flame up your fire. Yes, it is. Now, you want some of that. But what you don't want to end up with is a big fatty fire that creates lots of black soot. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So i got to check my temperature here. Always uh, use a meat thermometer. Uh, to check your roast temperature, because you want it to be, for a medium rare roast here, I want it to be about 115, 120 degrees. It'll rest out. That's not real hot. No, it's not real hot, but it's exactly right. So, let's see here. It's like mine. It takes a little while to get up there. Yeah. I like the instant read thermometers, you know, the digital. I have those. This is kind of old-fashioned for me. So, I think we've got about five more minutes on our roast. Okay. I'm going to turn it one more time. Look at you can that. see we're getting that nice charred crust. You could also see, if the camera can see in there, we're on kind of a medium to medium low fire. Because yeah, my yeah. roast is so thick, I want to go a little bit slower. It's not like a steak. But you want to sear, 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 right? Right. Okay. So. And okay. That's, and that's all apple wood in there, right? That's all apple wood. Oh, oh, wow. So I'm going to trim off a little bit of this uh, bigger fat chunks. Again, I can see and feel that this is a little right. thick. It's really very easy to feel what you want to get off. The, the, you just take but you it. want some of it because it kind yeah, of yeah. bastes it while it cooks. This is all one more chunk right here. Yeah, I was looking at that one. <laughs> all right. All right. Okay. So now we're going to put it into a pan and we're going to make a a big green spice herb. Salty oh. lemony marinade for this. All right. All right. So here's to the marinade. Okay. Um, you know, George, I, I use gloves here for a reason. There's two reasons. One is I'm going to be handling hot peppers. Uh huh. So it's it's an easy way to not have to deal with getting it in your eyeball, right? Oh boy. And the other is that I'm going to rub this into my lamp. So uh, that's why I put some gloves on here. And we're just going to go right down our little list of things. That's some brown cumin. 
some fresh jalapeno. Uh -huh. Very okay. fresh. A little black pepper. Some salt. That's just about a pinch, isn't it? Fresh cilantro. Oh, now, you don't see a that. lot of cilantro in Greek cooking, but I really like the flavor. I do too. All right? I do some, too. Some uh, ground coriander seed. Garlic. Everyone loves a little garlic, but garlic is one of those things that you can overdo, you know. So, yes, and yes. they always say, um, you know, Emerald's famous for just adding more garlic and adding more Tabasco, yeah. right? But I think you can overdo it a little bit. A little cayenne pepper, a little clove. And we're building, we're building a marinade, sure we're are. building layers of flavor, okay? That's sure what are. the whole idea is here. Okay, and then we have some cinnamon. Ooh. So, um, now, when I was finishing the roast over here, right. I finished it with a little lemon juice, and I I'm going to yeah. reinforce that in my marinade. Okay. So, because I want some of that citrusy goodness to come out. Okay. So let's squeeze in some fresh lemon juice. Uh, the seeds. You think this blade could cut up ice cubes and all sorts of things, but these darn little citrus seeds can yeah. funk up the works if you yeah, know what I mean. Can. So we're going to add some whole lemon. That's a great idea to squeeze it in your hand. And you, you get the seeds and yeah. the, the dish gets Here's the another little tip for you, George. Feel this lemon. This is not a good lemon. Probably because it's so hard. Now, it's not a bad lemon, but if you're out buying at the grocery store and you're paying a buck for a lemon, what you want to feel for is lemon that has some give to it. Look at the thickness. Yeah, very. Look at the thickness of this rind. You yeah. are paying for it. Pretty much you're throwing half the lemon away. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I get them by the case, so I can't always choose each one. But this is a sign of a bad lemon that has so much, and you can just feel it. It's really hard to squeeze. Yes. So when you go to the grocery store, just pick a lemon that has a little give. Limes are the same way. Grapefruits are the same way. All citrus is that. So a little tip of the day, huh? Yeah, really. A little tip of the cap for you. And when you go through, the, uh, through that department next time you go to the store, remember that. Because normally, if you're going to buy a lemon, you just... Pick one out and put it in the Yeah, you just think, oh, two right for a dollar, grab two lemons, right? They're all but there's yellow. a real art to picking the right ones. Okay, now we're going to put a little olive oil in there. Okay. So now, depending on what you're using, sometimes you need to add a little bit more liquid. So we're going to see how this goes. So to me, there it goes. There it there goes. So that's done. That's our paste. So I added maybe a quarter cup of yeah. red wine to yeah. that. And now we have a paste. Here's that gorgeous leg of lamb that we boned out. Right? Right. right. We're just going to take our paste, pour it right on. Wow. All right? Yep. And you can set that whole blender to the side for me. All if you right. Will. I'll do that. So again, the second use. I had hot peppers. Now the second use for my gloves. You want to work this into all the crevices of your boned out leg of lamb. All right? Yeah, that looks good. Now this, I would set for maybe four hours. You could even let it go overnight if you want. Just, you want that, just that way? Yeah, just that, that, that way. Refrigerated? And now, refrigerated. Okay. That's what the law says. Now. <laughs> if I was at home, I could never do this in the restaurants because the health department would never let me do that. But at home, I would let it sit on the counter because it's going to it's going to happen that much faster. Okay. And uh, but uh, the law says it has to be refrigerated. If you left it on the counter, how long would you leave it out for? No more than four hours. Okay. 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 Uh, and so now this would go right onto your charcoal grill. All right. And you saw how little olive oil I put in there, right? Very because little. if you put a lot of olive oil, that's going to drip down. Create soot. Yeah. We oh, want good. smoke on it from our fire. Yeah. We want that enhancement, not soot. Okay. Okay. How about that, huh? Now that's a leg of lamb that uh, he started with, was actually cooking when I came in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. so that takes my guess is depending on the intensity of your fire, thirty to forty-five minutes. That's all. Yeah. Oh well. Wow. It looks like it's been cooking all day. Exactly. So how do you like your lamb? I like a medium. Let's just take a look over here at this at this chunk right in the middle. Okay. So right there in the middle, you can see, is that how you like your lamb, medium? Beautiful, beautiful. Huh? Yeah, beautiful. What did you say? 
Beautiful. Gorgeous. Absolutely. Fantastic. The guy who cooked this must be an incredible chef. Must be. Has to be. Has to be. It All better right. be right now, huh? All right. We got a plate. All right. We've got some George medium now. As this chunk gets bigger, it's going to get more rare. So I'm going to take your medium right out of here. Right, right. Huh? Now, um, the other oh. thing you get when you butterfly a lamb like this, what is each bite getting? A little bit of the outside, Look right? At that. Is that something? That's beautiful. Are you going to come back here for dinner sometime? I already have, and I will again. <laughs> so, we're just going to pop that right on a plate. Each bite gets a little bit of that nice char on yes, the outside you when you butterfly it out. You bet. And all the taste that went into it. Okay. Now we're going to finish our plate. With a little bit of Greek style twice baked potatoes. So basically, these potatoes I roast in an oven and I dry them out, just olive oil, salt, pepper, whole. And by roasting them to done, I dry out all that moisture. So now, when I then I fry them a little bit in olive oil, they get really crispy on the outside. Wow. And I toss them with Greek oregano and garlic. Let's see, I'll, I think I better try it to make sure how all right. much I should And be. then this is just some simple braised escarole with garlic and olive oil. That looks good. Okay, we have one more thing. Now, oop, I got some lamb on me. Um, I like a little yogurt finish. The Greeks okay. love yogurt, right? So I take my yogurt, put it in cheesecloth, let it strain. It gets rich and creamy, just like this. So just a nice little dollop uh, of a cucumber tzatziki. Okay? Okay. Cucumber, a little bit of mint, a little bit of garlic, salt, pepper. Is that a beautiful plate or what? It is gorgeous. Okay, George, it's time for a bite. Oh, that sounds really good to me. I'm going to take this one right here because I... That's, that's a good crusty end, it, huh? The crusty end is really good. Yeah. What do you think there, George? Or can you not talk about I think I'm coming for dinner is what I think I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, not bad for a rookie. That's really wonderful. Yeah. What it is. And don't be afraid of the leg of lamb. It was really pretty easy to do. If you just you follow along what Tom was doing. Right. Tom, and thanks. don't you forget to help support KCTS, right? That's the uh, whole Appreciate idea. Appreciate it. Appreciate it very so, much. So, uh, yeah. Continue to have this show on and people like Tom on. Uh, it's a great pleasure. Thank you. Good health to you and hope you can see in my joints. Thank you, sir. All right.